After that, I became a journalist and I started to write. And I became what we might call a minor celebrity. But I used to love the applause. That's why I can talk about it. I trained as an actress and I was an actress for seven years. And if you speak to any actor and say, why do you do a job that makes you mostly poor, you know, uh, into all kinds of situations, why do you put up with it? They will say, the applause. It's addictive, it's like a drug. When you're in that state, you want it. You want the fame and people will give it to you. And I had a little bit of it and it became quite toxic. I was a minor celebrity who in my world thought I was the major celebrity in the universe because everybody became a little star in my orbit of ego. My husband at the time, my kids, my parents, everything revolved around my nafs. What's the moment when the light got in? When did you first feel that the universe was about something different? When did that happen? And I've thought about this long and hard. And it comes down to this moment for me. In two thousand, I had my first daughter. Her name is Alexandra. And you know the birth of a first child for both parents, but I promise you, especially for the mother, is a moment of transcendence. You all, you leave your body, you, you, your heart bursts with a love you didn't even know was there when you first look into those eyes. And more than that, you want the world to be a better place. I went instantly overnight from someone who used to listen to Eminem and rap stars to someone who didn't like loud music too much. Well, not that kind of music because I didn't want women to be abused. I didn't want that kind of language around my daughter. In the year 2000, in December, my daughter was a month old and I was holding her to me and I was watching the evening news and a photograph came on that would change my life. And it was this photograph. There is a young boy, he looks 10 years old, but actually he's 14, he's small for his age. And all you can see is the back of him because the cameraman is behind him. And the little boy is standing like this. And what is amazing, is that he's about to throw something. It's a dynamic photograph. But what is more amazing, brother and sisters, brothers and sisters, is that just a few meters away, gigantic, bearing down on him is a tank. Now, if you and I were here, I didn't tell you he had a stone in his right hand, did I? If you and I, may Allah protect us, ever came face to face from a tank, my bet is we'd run. That's the human instinct. But this little boy, he was leaning into the tank. He was going to throw his stone without fear, no matter what happened to him. And I knew, sitting there with my new baby, I knew the men in that tank were afraid of him, and he was not afraid of that tank. The newscaster told me the boy's name was Faris O'Day, and he came from a place called Rafa Refugee Camp that I'd never heard of. And I want you to remember that name because it comes up later in my story. And I didn't know it at the time, but nine days after that photo, Faris O'Day was shot dead by an Israeli sniper. You see, he was Palestinian. The bullet went into his throat and he bled to death on the floor of his refugee camp, protecting the women of his village with a stone. Now that photo and the Qadr of Allah is the only explanation I have for everything that has happened since, even leading up to right being here today. Because I have been aware that I have not been guiding my ship 
for a very long time. And we all have moments where we think we're in charge, right? And it's good to have a plan. We're encouraged to have aspirations. But what if you let go of the steering wheel of your life? Who's actually guiding you? <laughs>